DC lesson nine, part C, our third and final theory component for electrical meters. So about this lesson, um, concludes by explaining the use and safety aspects of typical analog and digital meters and a little bit on um, ohm meters. So 9.7 ohm meters, 9.8 multimeters, and then 9.9, .9, we're going to do a, le a lesson summary of all parts A through to C. So first let's kick off with the good old ohm meter. An analog and digital ohm meter operate by passing a current through a resistance that's being measured, and they simply measure the voltage drop and the current and multiply the two together to give you a resistance. The current is supplied by a battery inside the meter case. While both types of meters work in very similar ways, their internal circuitries are a little bit different. So the analog ohm meter, here's an example. And as I said, it works by multiplying the voltage, sorry, dividing the voltage um, by the current. So basic analog ohmmeter has an internal battery and an adjustable fixed resistor in series with the meter movement. So I'll just get my, my screen pointer up and running for you. So let's look at the circuit diagram down the bottom. Here we've got the meter movement. We've got a resistor, which is a, a multiplying resistor. Then we've got a variable resistor in the circuit here, a battery to supply some current, and then a resistor under test on the terminal. So it's just a simple series circuit. And effectively, we're measuring the current through the resistance here, but we know what the fixed resistance value is. So effectively, we're taking R equals V divided by I. So that's what the relationship between R1, measuring the voltage across it, and the meter, and giving you a reading in ohms. What that looks is a physical circuit. Here's our resistor being measured, battery in the circuit, our variable resistor here, and then our fixed multiplier resistor and eventually into our meter and out again. Um, the reason that we have a variable zero ohms adjustment on the outside of the meter is this particular kind of approach means that these leads that come out of the meter actually do have a significant impact on the resistive value. So what we do is we actually connect the two together, then we use our adjustment knob, and we make sure that that meter is actually reading zero before we actually measure across our unknown resistance. And that balances out the internal resistance in the leads, and by the way, in the circuit itself, it balances the whole circuit out. So analog ohm adjustments, as I was just saying, if you're not very careful, you've got to make sure the mechanical zero is set to zero, making sure that end of the scale is spot on. Then you connect the two leads together here and the needle will deflect all the way up to zero ohms on the other end and you need to adjust the zero at the other end. Now the mechanical zero adjustment rarely needs to be changed. Once it's been set for the meter, it rarely needs adjustment. But the zero ohms um, often needs to be adjusted. So check both of these on an ohm meter when you're doing accurate resistance measurement, especially with an analog meter. So the analog meter scale, you notice, is not linear. Resistance scales, not linear. 
expanded at the low ohms end and compressed at the high ohms end. So analog meters read best in the middle. So in here, if you have some idea of what it is you're measuring, if you can get the needle to react into this part of the circuit, this is where it's going to be the most accurate. Up here, you're going to have inaccuracies because the scale is too compressed. Down here, you're going to have inaccuracies because a tiny bit of resistance will make a big difference on the scale. So sensitivity issues up there and compression issues up here and best to keep your reading if you possibly can center scale between the 10 and the 20. Digital ohm meter uh, works very similarly to a digital voltmeter. So again, we have an internal voltage source being provided by a battery, normally a nine volt battery inside a multimeter, and it's simply punching the source out. And again, we're going through these multipliers to get different scales which will create different voltage drops, which will create different ranges on the meter. And again, at the moment we're on the 2 meg scale, so the ohm meter is displaying in meg ohms, and this particular resistor here, if you look at the colour bands, it's a 1 meg ohm resistor, so it's displaying 1 meg ohm on the display. So again, it's just a matter of using our analog to digital converter, which remember in our other meter was just 4,000 counts. They're doing exactly the same thing here. They're just converting the voltage around the circuit into counts, which represents so many ohms. They scale it up through the display and then display the value in ohms. So multimeters, a multimeter has just more than volts and ohms and current on the selector. Each measurement function, such as volts, current or resistance, are available. You also have AC and DC, because AC and DC are going to be treated a little bit differently inside your meter. And the measurement ranges, such as 10 volts up to 100 volts, etc., etc. A lot of digital multimeters are actually auto-ranging. They just switch in and switch out their scaling as they need to. So reading an analog multimeter just means understanding the scale. And you've got to understand is the scale going left to right or right to left. With voltmeters and ammeters, the scale always reads left to right. But with ohmmeters, did you notice, the scale measured right to left. So be careful with uh, meter scales. And we talk in major divisions, divisions and minor divisions are the, are the key words that we, we use when we're talking about meters. So these ones here, these are the major divisions. I'm putting little magenta crosses across the major divisions. That's the major divisions. The divisions are the ones that sit in between. So I'll just put a little zero above those so you can see the divisions. So they're the divisions. And then between the divisions are the minor divisions. So you can just colour a couple of those in so you can see them. There's the, there's the minor divisions. So once you understand that in this particular case, a major division, which is the step between here and here, represents a value of 2. In this case, I think we're talking about volts. So this represents 2 volts in here. Our full-scale deflection is 10 volts up this end. Our meter is ready here. We've kind of blown that up so you can see it. So we're reading somewhere in the middle here. So 
it's above five there's the five and if just put in red there there's our five but we're not quite all the way up to the six so we know that we've got one volt and you'll notice it's one two three four five divisions so they're in fifths of a volt one fifth of a volt each or 0 0.2 of a volt each same thing so here we've got 5.2 then 5.4 then 5.6 and then finally 5.8 all the way up to 6 so this is sitting at 5.6 but not 5.8 so we would say it's at 5.8 7 so we're showing a reading of 5.7 so you can read easily to half a volt with reasonable accuracy by using the major divisions the standard divisions and the minor divisions example of a uh, analog multimeter scale so here's the scale in all its glorious detail and again but let's not get too complicated with all the stuff on the screen um, you'll notice that let's start at the blue scale the ohms so we've got an ohms and a killer ohms scale and which one you use will depend on which one of these you select and you'll notice the scale goes from zero on this end to full scale on this end so this one is reading right to left so we're reading in this direction if you come down to the next scale which is the AC voltage scale so this is volts AC in here it's measuring the other way around it's zero on this end full scale on that end and the same for DC amps and for AC volts so for current and voltage the meter reads left to right but but for resistance it measures right to left so just be aware that there are differences when it comes to an analog multimeter it's one of the great things about a digital one you don't have to think about it so you can see all the different um, arrangements you can see the different readings I'm not going to go into all of them in detail so you can see here at that point you're either reading 510 or 51 ohms and it just depends on which multiplier scale you're on over here on the meter so you're either on the times 1 scale or you're on the times 10 scale here so that's what's being represented here and that applies to each of the ranges each has its own scaling arrangements Um, parallax error is important when using analog meters you've got to be able to look right over the top if you can see the reflection of the needle in the mirror so there's a mirror on the scale especially on the larger good quality meters there's a mirror so here mirror so mirror and if you can see reflection that means you're far too far to the left if you can see it on your left it means your eye is too far to the right so when your eye is just in the right place you won't be able to see it the reflection will be directly under the needle and then you can scale off in the right place making sure you're spot on with your reading so it's important it's called parallax error and that's the purpose of the mirror that's on the scale 
the digital multimeter display. The display typically we call it a DMM, digital multimeter. It shows the selected measurement function and uh, has multipliers when required. Sometimes they are, sometimes they auto range. It shows the value that's being measured, just displays it for you. You don't have to work out scales and multiplications and divisions, just displays it. The functions and multipliers are indicated as enunciators on the screen. So if it's in milliamps, they'll put a little MA on the screen. Or if it's in volts, they'll put a V on the screen. So here's an example of how they do that. So you can see here, screen pipe head on. We're on millivolts, and you can see here millivolts DC, and it's displaying 2.5 millivolts, and it's on manual because the auto ranging feature has been turned off. On this one, we're on DC volts, and it's auto ranging, and at the moment it's displaying. 19.33 volts. Down here on the AC, AC volts, and the voltage is very small. It's in millivolts. So I've got millivolts AC, so 159.5 millivolts. And then over here, the voltage has gone up considerably, it's auto ranged itself, and it's now displaying 240 volts AC. So you can see with digital multimeters, you don't have to worry about multipliers and a lot of scaling, you've just got to learn to read the information that's presented on the display of the digital multimeter. Similarly, here's one that's measuring current, and you can see we can measure AC current or DC current and in this particular case you use this button to select backwards and forwards between the two values and how can you tell? Can you see the solid bar and the dotted bar? Solid bar means DC, dotted bar means AC and the AC symbol is in yellow. So to get to AC it defaults to DC and you've got to press the yellow button to convert it into AC. So when you first turn on you're going to get DC but if you want to measure AC you've got to press the yellow button and it will then change the scaling to read AC volts or AC current I should say in this particular case. It does the same with volts. Same thing happens. You can see with the volt scale there is a solid bar and a dotted bar, solid bar and a dotted bar because you switch between them using the yellow button. On the ohm scale, the ohm scale on a multimeter is almost always auto ranging. So you can see here we're on ohms and Obviously it's open circuit at the moment and we're getting overload, it's called OL, just means infinitely open. Here we've got a resistor of 10.43 kilo ohms, so it's displaying 10.43, but see the display is in K ohms, so you've got to make sure you multiply that by times 10 to the 3, because it's in thousands. Similarly there is a low resistance range. And you'll see it comes back in just ordinary ohms. Some of these have actually milli ohm scales, depending on what the quality of your meter. In this particular case, we're reading a very low value, 0.9 of an ohm. So very, very small resistance values. So you just change your ohms scale to something smaller for here. Instrument safety, electrical test instruments are given in category ratings, categories 1, 2, 3 and 4. 
Um, the rating also includes the maximum voltage the instrument can handle. A meter rated to a thousand volts must be able to withstand higher voltages up to 6,000 or 6 kV. Meter probes are also given category ratings, so they also come in categories 1, 2, 3 and 4. Each category is based on the level of fault protection, that is the amount of current you can put through the instrument before you will cause physical damage, fire and damage to yourself, often through burns. So a Cat 4 is the highest category of an unprotected supply. So you're going to get the maximum protection out of a Cat 4 meter. Cat 3 is a typical category, um, supply protected, and it normally has a serviceable fuse inside to do that. Category 2 equipment is uh, connected to a power outlet. And Category 1, low fault. You know, if you go and buy an El Cheapy uh, meter from JCAR for 15 or 20 dollars, I can guarantee you it's a category one. It will not handle much voltage or fault conditions. So it's all about fault current, how much energy your meter can cope with to operate its protective devices is what all the categories are actually about. And you will see written on the device, you can see the meter category ratings are normally printed on the front and the category may change depending on the scale. So here on 600 volts it's category 3, but on 1000 volts it's only category 2. So often it only applies to the voltage measurement. So category 3, 600 volts, category ratings up more than that, it's only a category 2. Ideally a rating should be indicated tested to, so it's been actually tested to the category. It's not a theoretical category. You want tested to the category. So again, if you look carefully on the probes, you can see here printed on the probes, 1000 volts, category 3 to 10 amps. So it will protect you from 10 amps, category 3, <coughs> excuse me, up to a thousand volts. So voltage measurement, safety, confirm that the meter has the correct category rating. So if you think there's any doubt, go category four. For most electrical work, use a 300 volt category three, because it can withstand up to 4,000 volts or higher rated instruments. Some types of analog meters have category ratings. Many don't have these, and therefore they're a safety hazard. So we're gonna use an analog, Make sure it has a category rating. Current measurement. Safety. Confirm that the circuit is dead when connecting an ammeter. Make sure the circuit is dead, not live, because you've got a break into the circuit. Make sure the multimeter can handle the current that's being measured. So if you're going to measure 30 amps, make sure your meter is capable of measuring 30 amps at the top end. Use a meter that is protected internally with the correct type of fuses. In other words, high rupture capacity or HRC type fuses. And here you can see meter fuses on the top. So at the left hand side you can see HRC fuses and on the right hand side you can see glass fuses. So these are the ammeter protective fuses inside your meter. And the one on the right hand side has a very low fault level. Where the one on the left hand side, high fault level. That's why the Red Cross, not going to offer much protection. Glass fuses are not going to offer much protection. HRC fuses are going to offer a great level of protection. But let me warn you, they're normally about $35 to $40 each to replace if you do blow the fuses at the HRC meter. So it can be an expensive exercise if you start blowing your ammeter fuses. So it's always good to make sure you've set your ammeter to the maximum current and then work your way back. So using a digital multimeter as an ammeter, DMMs usually 
have extra sockets for current measurement and you can see it here we've got a 10 amp socket and a 40 milliamp socket so if you're measuring a, a circuit you know you can have less than 40 milliamps use this one because it's going to give you better accuracy if it's above 40 milliamps you're going to have to use the 10 amp if you're going above 10 amps you're just going to have to get another meter so resistance measurement safety confirm that the circuit is dead you cannot measure the resistance with a circuit live it will cause damage to you the circuit and the meter a low resistance circuit should be measured using an ohmmeter range that passes a suitability high current through the circuit and digital model meters typically has a continuity function which can also be used for the low ohms range it gives you an audible tone just so you know you have continuity so low resistance measurement a couple of ways of going and doing that you can use the digital multimeter on the right or you could use what's called an AVO amps volts ohms meter on the left hand side so it's a well-known brand type is the AVO and I'll just turn the pen on and there it is there see AVO AVO meter stands for amps volts ohms so AVO meters often have very very good ability to measure very very small amounts of resistance so you can go down very very slow with a, an AVO meter AVO meters also come with built-in circuit breakers that uh, also help protect what you're doing The AVO meter also offers you these individual zeroing adjustments. So when you're playing with low voltages, you can really get the accuracy down by using the appropriate zeroing potentiometer. Diode testing only available with digitals. So the semiconductor that passes current in one direction only. Um, has two terminals called the anode and the cathode if a positive compared to a cathode will conduct current and the voltage across the diode will always be around point, uh, 0.5, 0.6, maybe even 0.7 if negative relative to the cathode the diode will not conduct and will act as an open circuit and will look like infinite so this is what diodes typically look like sometimes they have the diode symbol stamped on them Diodes come in many different cases, outlines, voltage ranges, etc. So when you're testing a diode with your multimeter, you can see on the left-hand side there's a diode forward reading. It's got 0.495, nearly 5 volts forward. And then on the right-hand side we've turned it around and you can see it's gone open circuit, which is what you'd expect a diode to do. So that's a good diode. So that brings us to the end of lesson nine, using meters. So let's summarize A through to C. An ammeter is connected in series, always in series, with a circuit under test and comprises of a meter, be it analog or digital, connected across a very low value resistor because it's connected across the resistor in parallel. We use the special term shunt resistor. The resistance of the shunt is generally only a few milliohms, normally very, very small, but large wattage can dissipate a fair amount of heat. A multi rage ammeter often has a universal or atron shunt rather than separate shunt resistors, just to save space and room. A voltmeter is connected in parallel with a circuit under test, always in parallel and comprises a meter, whether it be analog or digital, connected in series with a high value of resistance we call the multiplier. For an analog meter movement, the required resistance can be found by multiplying the movement's sensitivity in ohms per volt by the maximum voltage for that particular range. The resistance of an analog voltmeter changes with each voltage range so you just need to be aware of that 
the higher the range the higher the resistance and the less loading effect on the meter has so the higher voltages we're reading the less effect it's going to have on the circuit the resistance of a digital voltmeter is the same on all the ranges and it's usually 10 mega ohms plus in other words almost an open circuit an ohmmeter passes current through the resistance that's being measured the value of the current depends on the meter the resistance range the resistance that's being measured when measuring low resistance values a high test current above one milliamp gives a more reliable reading so if you're going to measure something that's very low resistance best to use as high a current as you can muster multimeters and their ancillaries probes plugs etc should be rated according to the category of work that's being carried around that's category one two three or four for me I never use anything less than a category three or a category four meter category three refers to 240 volts sorry 230 volts 400 volts AC mains wiring protected by service fuses so it's typically an indoors type thing voltage measurement should be done with a category 3 300 volts or better rated voltmeter or multimeter so like I said stick to cat 3 or better analog multimeters have a pointer scale that uh, covers all the meter functionalities that are available to you scales have major minor divisions to give resolution of two decimal places remember the scales for volts and current measure left to right but ohms measures right to left a digital multimeter an LCD display has normally four digits to show a reading and it has enunciators to show the selected meter functionality and range so K to indicate a reading is in K ohms not just in ohms for example a good digital multimeter will have a properly rated HRC fuse to protect against overload and overcurrent. Glass fuses are not suitable and are potentially dangerous in many applications. So be very careful if your meter's got uh, glass fuses, I'd suggest you go and buy a better form of meter. After measuring current on a digital multimeter, return the meter leads to the voltage terminal. So the last thing you want to do is leave the current meter things because it's effectively a short circuit. You go and stick it on a 240 volt circuit on your next test. You're effectively putting a short circuit across something and it can cause irreparable damage to the equipment, to the meter, and more importantly, to you. This habit reduces the chances that you might accidentally measure a voltage while the meter is actually an ammeter. So that brings us to the end of lesson nine, part C, and all about different uses of voltmeters, ammeters, and ohmmeters.